Curse City. Probably one of the most controversial Games Workshop releases, at least this year. Well, I was lucky enough to get my hands on a box. And although I didn't get it early, or for free, like many other channels, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon, and I'm going to give it the grimdark treatment. So like many others, I ordered the Curse City box, not expecting to actually get a copy. I was however one of the seemingly very lucky few to actually get my hands on a copy. My Element Games order did come through and now, whilst although a little bit late to the party, I'm going to jump fully on the bandwagon. Now I toyed with a few video ideas for this box, things like a 24 hour challenge or some speed painting. But actually, I thought with my channel, probably the best bet is if we give it the grim dark treatment and I'll do it video by video of a character at a time working through. And today we're going to start with the Melda Braskov. Now I expect I probably won't make my way through all of the heroes in the box as that is going to be a lot of videos. But if there's anyone in particular that you want to see me attempt, then please just reach out, stick a comment down below, let me know what you think. And I want to get a nice decent range of, of different miniatures from this. So first off, let's have a look at the miniature that we're going to do today. Imelda Braskov is probably the most prominently placed character on the box art, so I think nice and fitting for our first one. The miniature itself has a lovely range of textures from the plate armour, the material and those lovely feathers that are thrown over her shoulders. I think this should be a good one for the grimdark treatment. Before I start putting any paint on the model, I want to get something on that base. For this I'm going to use some plastic card to make some cobblestones. Using a craft knife I'll cut out a strip of plastic card and then cut this into a handful of smaller rectangles and squares. Sticking with the craft knife, I'll also roughen up the edges and just round those corners just to make them look like they've been eroded and worn down over time. We do want them to look a bit broken up. To stick them to the base, you can use plastic glue, but for speed, a bit of super glue will be perfect. I won't place these perfectly straight on as I do want them to look like they've been broken and moved, maybe displaced slightly. With some broken stones in place, I need to add some texture to make some mud or some dirt. And for that, I'm going to use the Citadel Astro Granite Debris. This is slightly more coarse than the others, and for when I use the pigments later on, it will give more gaps for them to sit in and give a bit of a nicer look. I'll spread this onto all of those areas not covered by the cobblestones using a texture spreader. I'll normally apply this pretty thick as it does tend to flatten down pretty well as it dries. This can be a pretty messy step, so be careful and be prepared to tidy things up. Whilst the texture paint is still wet, I'll also push in a few small stones just to add in a little bit more variation and to look like some rubble to fit in with that bit of ruin that she's standing on. So with the base all done and dry, it's time for some paint. To start off, I'm gonna give her a nice black primer using the Vallejo Surface Primer, as I usually do. As these are essentially board game pieces, they'll hopefully get plenty of use, and I don't want that paint job to lift or to rub off. For a display mini, I probably would give her a coat of whatever black that I'm gonna use, but I'm going for efficiency here, so knowing that I shouldn't have to touch up any of those black areas, I'm gonna head straight to a zenithal highlight using a dry brush of Citadel's Dawnstone. Focus is going to be mainly all those material areas on her arms and on her legs, as these are going to be staying relatively dark. This will put those first highlights in and will give me an effect of some light coming from overhead. For a further highlight, I'll then grab out some Celestra Grey and do exactly the same, just being a little bit lighter on the brushwork. Now that has put the highlights in quite nicely, but it's also lightened everything up just a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm gonna to need to darken this down just to get it to read as black again. To do this, I'll use a couple of coats of everyone's favorite Citadel Nuln Oil. 
This will darken it all down whilst preserving those highlights I put in place with the dry brushing. For her armour, I'm going to use the Vallejo Metal Colour Magnesium as a base. I've mentioned in many videos previously that these are my absolute favourite metallics and this has not changed. They look great and apply so easily and so smoothly. They're designed for an airbrush, but as you can see, even applied with a brush over a black primer, they give superb coverage. For the highlights, I'll use the metal colour Dura Aluminium, or if you're American, Dura Aluminum, which is not only really hard to pronounce, it's also a really nice bright silver. I'll apply this in more of a stippling motion to the areas where I want the highlights to sit. I want the armour plates to look a little bit beaten and battered, and there'll be some steps later that will achieve this look, but it helps to put in a bit of variation in nice and early on. To push this even further, applying a minute amount of metal colour chrome will add a final highlight and just push that contrast a little bit further. Now we can't leave it looking so bright and shiny, so it's time for the first wash. And for this, again, I'm going to use the ever popular Nuln Oil. Thin slightly to ensure that it draws into those recesses nicely. This will dull things down slightly and start to build that worn look. You could use an oil wash for this, but for what I'm doing for this, again, efficiency being my aim, I want this to dry nice and quickly, whereas an oil wash is gonna take some time. Now that's the silver armor plates done for the moment, so sticking with the metallics, it's time just to pick out some of those gold details. Now I've not had that chance to really read up on the law, but with the armor and equipment that she has, I guess that Imelda is a fairly wealthy in comparison to most of the denizens in the mortal realms. So I'm gonna go for a nice strong gold color. Starting off with a scale color necro gold, this will give a nice base tone, and then adding in some highlights using the scale color dwarven gold, which is a very rich and quite a yellowy gold. This will make it look really expensive. To finish off the gold, I'll turn to another crowd favorite, Agrax Earthshade. This will dull it down slightly, but it's also gonna give a little bit more shade in and give some definition. For the leather pouch around her upper thigh and as a base coat for all those feathers across her shoulders, I'm gonna use Rhinox Hide. For a nice easy way to pick out all those feathers, I'll then grab out the dry brush again and we'll hit those areas with a nice light dry brushing of Zandri dust. I'll try not to go too heavy as I don't want it to get into any of those recesses. I just want it to pick out the texture. Some Rakar flesh will be used for the final highlight. And for this, I am gonna be super gentle. As you can see, I'm applying this with single gentle passes of the dry brush so that I don't lay down too much paint. Doing this gives you a lot more control over where the brush is going and how you're applying the paint. For those robes, I'm gonna go for a nice grim, dirty white. And the first step for this is going to be using a base coat of Citadel's Wraith Bone. Now, this is another step where I am being lazy. Usually, I'd build this up, but to save time, I'm gonna go straight in. I'll need a couple of thin coats just to ensure decent coverage. For some shading, I'm gonna do something that I very rarely do. Use contrast paint. Using some of the contrast Cryptek Armor Shade, thinned heavily using contrast medium, I'll apply this carefully to all of those areas. By using the contrast medium here, it will continue to work as the contrast paints usually do, as the medium is essentially contrast paint without the pigments added. It just means that it won't build up quite so heavily and we'll get a nice smoother look to it. I will make sure that I don't just slop it on though, and I'm gonna build it up in multiple coats. Contrast paint is designed to pull and to build up into the recesses, and whilst I don't mind a little bit of pulling, I don't want it to look unnatural. Before I tackle the skin and the hair, I do wanna do just a couple more little details. For the flesh above the beak and for the eyes of the eagle that's hanging over her shoulders, rather than using a straight yellow, I'm gonna use Baylor Brown which is a yellowy brown color and isn't too vibrant, which will help to keep that nice desaturated palette that we're looking for. So now it's time for the skin tones and 
I will be honest that painting female skin is one that I've often struggled with as I tend to go a little bit too contrasty and a bit too harsh, which generally makes the skin tone look just that little bit more masculine. For Imelda, I'm gonna start off with a base coat, quite a bit lighter than I usually would, and I'm gonna use multiple thin coats of Cadian Flesh Tone. I am going straight onto a black base coat here, so thin the paint down nicely and use very thin layers, that way you won't build up any unwanted texture and you shouldn't fill any of those recesses with excess amounts of paint. To highlight, I'm gonna add in a small amount of Wraith Bone to the Cadian Flesh Tone. Using this rather than a white means that the skin will keep some more of its warmth as it is a little bit more of a yellowy color. I'll pick out the most raised areas such as her nose, her cheeks and her forehead Again, thinned quite nicely, almost to a glaze sort of consistency, just to ensure a little bit more of a smoother blend. By building up these highlights slowly, it means that I can soften those features and make her look a little bit more female. For her hair, I'm gonna give her some lovely realistic blonde hair. I'll start off with a base coat of Zandri Dust just to provide some nice yellowy brown roots and then I'll pick out the raised areas of the hair using Rakar Flesh, focusing mostly in more of a halo shape around the top of her head, as that's generally where the reflections of the light tend to hit. To give a little bit more definition to the hair, I'll finish off with a wash of Agrax Earthshade, which will make it look a little bit less yellow and a bit more of a realistic, dirty blonde. So now we have paint on everything, it's time for everyone's favorite step, weathering. For the weathering of this model, I don't really want to spend too much time, so we're going to keep it fairly simple. For her armor plates, I want to give a little bit of a rusty effect, so using the AK Interactive Rust Streaks, I'll thin it down to an almost wash-like consistency using some white spirits. I can then lay this down onto all of the armor plates, and like a wash, it'll settle down nicely into those recesses where that rust would likely build up. The Rust Streaks, much like my favorite Streaking Grime, is an enamel-based paint, so it does require white spirit to thin as opposed to the water that is required for acrylics. It does, however, give you a much higher level of control, and returning with a clean brush with a little bit of white spirit on it, I can carefully remove the paint from areas that I don't want it to sit on. This paint can be manipulated even after it's dried if you use white spirit provide some dirt and filth onto her robes and around her gloves, legs and feet. I'll turn to my favourite, Streaking Grime. Again, using White Spirit to thin this down a little bit, although not quite as much as I did with the Rust Streaks, I'll apply this all over the material and pay particular attention to the lower areas where the dirt and the grime would likely build up a bit more. Then again, just like I did with the rust streaks, I'll remove this from the areas that I don't want it to sit, but rather than using a brush, I'll use a cotton bud that's been dunked in some white spirit. Making sure to use rolling or dabbing motions rather than pushing it or dragging it across the surface. This will take off the grime from all the areas that you don't want it, but shouldn't damage any of the paint sitting underneath. You'll be able to see that as I remove the streaking grime, it does leave a little bit of a tint to the paint that is sitting underneath. This can be really good with things like whites, as it can give a nice brown, earthy tone to them. Now for the most part, I'm happy with the miniature, so it's time to pay some attention to the base. I don't want anything too crazy for this base, so I'm gonna give it another good dry brushing using Dawnstone, and then a light dry brushing of Celestra Grey, just to get plenty of depth into the grey tones. To provide some colour, I'm gonna use some weathering powders. I want to build up a nice reddish brown colour for the basin, so starting off with the Vallejo Brown Iron Oxide, I'll apply this over the base, but we'll build it up in some areas more than others, just to give a little bit of variation. I'll then take a completely dry and clean brush and very lightly brush this over the base, just to remove the excess and let it sit in all of those recesses. I'll then do exactly the same with the burnt umber powder too. As I apply this powder, it will mix into the powder already laid down and just give a nice reddish brown color. 
With some dark slate grey, I can add in some more dirt and dust around the base, but I'll also apply this over the lower areas of her robes and around her legs too. This will tie her into that base nicely. To seal these powders in, I'll use some white spirit. This does mean that they won't look quite so dusty, but it does prevent them from falling off quite so easily. Very important if it's being used as a gaming piece. As a last final touch, I need to do what every model deserves, a nice black base rim. And that is Ms. Imelda Brazgoff, all painted and grim darked up. When I saw the models contained within Curse City, I immediately knew that I wanted to paint them up. And to be honest, straight away I knew that at least a handful of them were gonna take the grimdark treatment really well. This model's actually one that really stood out for me. With a big variety of textures, such as the metal armor plates, the material and those feathers, on such a small model, this posed quite an interesting challenge, but a fun and very interesting one. Now I could have gone a lot darker when painting up this miniature, but generally when painting Grimdark, it's much more my style to go for something feeling a bit more realistic, a bit grungier, as opposed to the very stylistic, dark Grimdark that people often go for. This does lead to a little bit more of a cross between the Games Workshop paint style and the Grimdark style, which for me actually fits in better with what I think of the environments that the Games Workshop games are set in. As mentioned earlier in the video, I do welcome any suggestions or ideas for miniatures out of this box set that you guys want to see me tackle. I do have a handful of ideas for certain ones, but if there's some overwhelming love for a particular miniature, then I'll do my best. As you may have noticed, there are a lot of miniatures in this box, so I probably won't get through all of them, but we're gonna give it a good shot. I don't just have Curse City videos coming out though. I have got a number of tutorials and a couple of projects planned out over the next few months. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, that way you're not gonna miss out. If you've enjoyed this video and you do wanna see more, then hit that like button and drop a comment down below. Just let me know what you think. And remember guys, if all else fails, spray it black, start again.